What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Coffee and Van Chats on the Out of Collective Network. My name is John Croom. I'm sitting here with Michael Hernandez of Best Buddies Racing. And uh, yeah, they just had a pretty sick week. And I, I, what, I DM'd you right after Athens, right? Because our boy Brian Gomez smashed it up. We had me and Tristan Manderfeld, we had bets on it. We were running uh, bets. We have, we have like a group of four guys where we like put bets on races. And, uh, and it's really for nothing. But uh, you know they were lining up with Ty Magner. Who else? Who else were they saying? Uh, he's he's in there. But it was like Ty Magner, Brian Gomez. We had Alfredo on there, and somebody said I think somebody said clever. Um, but yeah, my boy pulled it out. My boy pulled it out. Those are all the guys that won races at Speed Week. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure. But anyways, man, like I just really realized. I think after that race, I was like, you know, I know you just from racing you know back in the day like when i lived on this side of the 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 country and like what you've what you've created and what you like the kind of man that you've turned into as cliche as that sounds is fucking sick and i feel like it's so underrated so let's just dive back to who you are like where do you get started because i don't think a lot of people actually know who you are you know what i mean yeah yeah no uh i started racing uh 10 10 years ago i'm 24 now no 12 years ago i'm sorry yeah Uh, 12 years ago uh, i started bike racing because i was a chubby little kid growing up yeah Uh, so little overweight kid that know that uh, feeling yeah wanted to play football with my friends and uh pop warner football back in the day was based off of weight not off so uh so my brother started swimming I, i grew up in claremont florida and we have a national training center there my brother started swimming for the NTC and uh, he started from there. He got into triathlons and my mom just kind of pushed me like, Hey, you should go do some running and biking with your brother to, you know, do some other exercise and kind of cross train and stuff. So I started doing that and hated swimming, uh, with yeah. passion, like doing laps in a pool. Yeah. Uh, most realized, triathletes hate yeah. swimming. Yeah. Uh, and realized that running without being chased, is, uh, is boring <laughs> and so yeah. but the bike kind of stuck you know it was uh took didn't take long for me to start racing just cycling races and uh from there went to nationals uh my second year racing uh podiumed in the time trial there and uh got a slipstream craddock raced with them for two years and then uh moved over to hot tubes and that was kind of where i decided like hey i want to try to make a job out of this yeah no, you're good. Oh, my text just decided to come to my computer at one time. No, no worries, man. No worries. Um, and yeah, so, but like, I think the craziest story about you is it's like, you know, it goes, it goes from Garmin and like, you're on the, you're in on the cusp of like, there's this world tour option, I think, you know, and like, and I, I don't know who I was talking to the other day, but it's like, you get 10 kids on Lux. And it's like you got Magna Sheffield and a, and a Quinn Simmons, and it's like the, in a lineup, a lot of those guys are, you know, the other eight guys are just as good, you know, and like yeah, could probably yeah. go and get that opportunity, but they can't take ten guys straight yeah. in, into Europe or even on rally. Like, there's only so many spaces, and and I feel like you were kind of one of those guys, but instead of turning it into a sour moment, like you went on and you you, you rode for a Volo. And then you had the Amgym Tour of California. You had some pretty solid results there. Why? Why did it stop there? Like, did was there was there just no contracts or like what was up? Yeah, it was a weird year. I think uh, you know, I, I spoke about this uh, not that long ago, and it was a year that there was a lot of good kids in that U twenty three range that all moved up to either Pro Conti or World Tour teams, and. I think teams were just looking for like that more European racer. Yeah. And I think personally that I do race relatively well in Europe. I think my skill set suits European racing well. I just didn't have enough exposure over there, in my opinion, to like, you know, just reps in Europe. You're eventually going to get those results if you're suited for that kind of racing. Yeah. And so I told myself at the age of 19 when I joined CCB that if, I don't make it 
you know, to world tour, what I consider making it is you're making a living off of bike racing. Like that's your soul. You know, you can be independent off of cycling. And, uh, you know, if I didn't make it by the time I was U20, done with my U23 career, I was going to focus on school and then try to, re, you know, refigure out my life from there. But, you know, yeah. school was definitely, my mom was a school teacher. So, you know, the school option was always like, hey, yeah. when are you going to go to school? Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. And so, where does that where does that come in now like are you in school now are you studying oh, yeah, now I'm, I'm, I'm done with school so part of being yeah. on a volo is that you have to be in some form of, form of education oh and really so well uh all throughout my u23 career i was uh one or two classes a semester and so uh, i was fortunate that once i finished my u23 career all it took was a a year yeah year so two semesters of uh, full course load and I finished in 2020. Okay. And then how does best buddies come? Cause that's, that's literally what happens, right? Yeah, it's like yeah. this birth of what I like to say, what I, what I thought was a retirement tour. And like, it literally, people were making fun of you guys actually. And I know Sorry. Eric, I, I know Eric, Eric Marcotte. And so like, I was joking a little bit with him and, um, but then you've seen the likes of Travis McKay, Ben Wolf, um, Danny Summerhill, good friend of mine as well. Um, and then you, and like, you've made it kind of clear that like, Hey, like you're going to kind of go a different direction. Um, you were going to take it a little bit more chill, but then you dickheads come out and you smash it, man. Like you guys look like you'd been training full gas. And I mean, like half the team was kind of like, kind of checked out, you could tell. And, but the other half of the team was like still full gas. And yeah. so like, how did this even happen? It was, I mean, the team itself happened. It was, I mean, it was just a lot of, I guess, stars aligning of things. Like, you know, I, I have a college degree in criminal justice, so nothing to yeah. do with sports management <laughs> or yeah. business, anything. So, yeah. uh, you know, I was just down in Miami spending some time with friends and uh, having just run into Anthony Shriver on a group ride in Miami. And uh, they run a bunch of, you know, weekly rides and stuff like that. He's the founder of Best Buddies. And, uh, you know, he, we started talking, he invited me to do one of the big charity rides here in Miami. And, uh, he liked how I interacted with the donors. He liked how I interacted with the buddies. And he just asked me if I thought that bike racing competitively was a viable way to raise money and spread uh, awareness for best buddies. Yeah. And I said, it is, if we get enough attention and we do the right races. And so the first person I went and talked to about this was Travis. Yeah. You know, I had this, I had this crazy, you know, this crazy guy. It's like, Hey, you want to put a bike team together? And I was like, man, well, who, who would be on it? And so it just yeah. so happened that Travis moved to Orlando where I'm originally from and where I was still living full time. And, uh, you know, we, I just asked him to go for a ride and he had just gotten back from Europe and all this stuff. And, you know, I wasn't really sure what he was doing next year, but I knew he didn't have a contract. And so, kind of told him about what best buddies was the mission, all that stuff. And, and he bought in pretty quick to, to that. And, you know, he had, he had an itch and I think he wanted to keep pushing to try to win pro Nats crit again. Yeah. Um, that was definitely like his sole motivator in my opinion. Cause you know, for him, it was like, he tried to push as get by as much as he could until like we were getting close to then uh, pro Nats. And as soon as pro Nats like came around, you saw he really like start training uh, for real. And then once that crash happened and Pronats didn't come through again, you kind of saw the dive of like, you know, I'm kind of ready to move on from this. So, yeah. Uh, but, but once Travis was on board, it was honestly so easy to get the other guys. Like, you know, especially with Travis had not even a full year removed from the sport. Uh, um, like everybody wanted to race with that guy. Like yeah. he, he's an amazing human being, he's an amazing bike racer. So, uh, it was pretty easy to convince guys to, Hey, come race with Travis McKay. Yeah, no, I think, uh, yeah. Like, I mean, that's like kind of one of those things that's like a learning moment that you cannot turn down. And I, mm -hmm. and honestly, man, and like, not to like toot your horn too much here and, and stroke your ego, but like, I mean, even like learning from you, I mean, like you have some things that you can teach out, like you've raced a lot of these crits. Like, I mean, you were getting fifth at Spartanburg when you were like 17 like so like you you've done these right i've seen you race these i was a cat four watching you race these races you know and so that's how i knew you um but now now you know reset a year 
you know, you, you, you've won the amateur national championship. You've in both the road and the time trial with, with Danny Estevez, which was, there was like a controversy of road him. And crit. Yeah. Road yeah, road and and crit. Crit. yeah that's, no, I mean, not time trial. Sorry. Sorry. Um, um, yeah. Road and crit. And so he comes over, but then there was some controversy there with him coming over. And, and then there was some controversy about your retirement tour and, and you guys would only win when Legion wasn't there, but now like, and, and it was kind of like, I could see it a little bit. Like Danny was still getting his feet wet. You were still like, you guys were still trying to figure out the lead out. And like, do you guys ride away from their lead out? Like what, where, do, who goes into the breakaways? Yeah. Like you were a sprinter that was off the front the majority of the race. Like I, I was like trying to figure out what you were trying to do, but now like you guys are racing. Like you guys are in the, like you guys are the team to beat. I mean, you guys showed yeah. that at speed week. No, I, I you know, I, I think, you know, and I, I, I give full credit to Legion for last yeah. year. They were, they were definitely better than we were. We were outgunned at just about every bike race we did. And I think like the one, you know, on paper, our biggest win last year was Spartanburg because that was the one race that we beat, you know, Legion's a squad head to head. And yeah. that was like, that was Estevez's breakout moment. Like, you know, people are like, oh yeah, you won elite credit, you won elite road race, whatever. Like there was no Legion there, blah, blah, blah. And same thing, you know, we won El Paso. I mean, Summerhill won uh, Birmingham and Legion only had four guys, but we only had four guys. Yeah. So it's like, you know, there, it wasn't always like, oh, you know, they win when Legion's outnumbered or whatever. But, um, but yeah, I mean, Spartanburg was definitely the biggest on paper result for us last year because of the field size. And, um, but we saw, you know, we saw the pieces were there. We were missing, we were missing, you know, a few pieces, but we saw we had the potential and we had the support. We had the, you know, the drive and bringing Summerhill and Estevez in really upped our game last year. And both those guys were late additions. Summerhill came in uh, just before Sonny King and Estevez came in uh, right after Tour South Florida. Yeah. So, uh, you know, those were, those are big, big additions. And I think it really raised the level of like, you know, this is what we're trying to do. Yeah. And that became attractive to other teams. Because yeah. I think last year people saw we were the only team that was even knocking on the door of Legion. And yeah, I mean like the only thing, and I keep saying this, hoping that Justin's listening. The only thing I wish he would do is I wish he would split him and Corey up. And I think he's going to do it too late to where he retires, but I would love, like, how dope would it be if Corey yeah, yeah, was yeah. on, on blazers yeah. and then you had, you know what I mean? And you just yeah, like, yeah. you stack these like three teams and they're all just going ahead. It would just be sick, but I don't think he's going to do it. But anyways, um, Possibility. yeah, yeah. But anyways, I like results aside, um, there's more mission to best buddies that, you know, and even I kind of dove into it when I talked to Travis about a year ago. And I think it's kind of dope what you guys are doing. Cause I think you guys even missed out on one of the crits, the big money crit in, um, that Justin put together. Cause you guys had already had a sponsorship, um, right. Well, we didn't get invited last year. So that was part of it. Oh, uh, okay. I thought you guys were invited, you know, total square, but the same, the same time was you guys were doing a best buddies event in California. Yeah, there, there was a, yeah, we, that, we, which we, was more important. It is more important, regardless yeah, of the yeah. fighter. But uh, we put on three big cycling events a year, one in Miami, one in Hyannisport, and what was called Hearst Castle. Now we call it uh, Best Place Challenge California just because we don't have a home base for it right now. Yeah. Um, it's kind of changed. Last year was in Petaluma. Um, and then along with that, we also run four uh, Best Buddies camps, which are a little more – one-on-one -on -one personalized or five-day camps in either Malibu. Uh, we do two in Malibu, one in Sonoma, California, one in Asheville. And these are, you know, we call them six-star events. Yeah. Uh, these are for high-level donors, uh, donate a large amount of money to Best Buddies. And, you know, there's different event levels and sizes and things like that. But, uh, you know, and then we try to show them the same level of excellence that we expect in our programs and our leadership, everything. And, and Best Buddies is all about excellence and raising the, the standard for people with intellectual disabilities and showing that, you know, anybody with a disability can do anything with that someone without a disability can 
the same level of excellence and that they also deserve that same level of excellent excellence and respect and opportunity through yeah. everywhere every aspect of life whether it be education jobs you know relationships everything so uh you know we, we cover the whole spectrum and uh and we try to cover as much of you know from elementary school through end of life um you know of, of age range of people with disabilities as well yeah. so all these events and, and the team is is all it's all based around benefiting people with intellectual disabilities and and the funds that we ask for and that, that we try to raise and sponsorships, uh, you know, they go to fund these events. But then once we surpass those events, you know, the, there is money that we, we want to push back to the organization that we're raising for. Which is insane, man. Like, cause uh, you know, I've seen, we've seen, we've seen a lot of teams, you know, it's like, you know, the, and they fizzle out, you know, they fizzle out pretty quick because, you know, the money goes into one dude's pocket or whatever. And then, you know, they create this pyramid scheme where guys are funding their way and whatever else. And you know what I'm talking about, man. You know what I'm talking. We can't talk about it on this podcast, but you know what I'm talking about. So then, so then to see you guys with an actual mission and what's cool is, is like, there's a buddy at every single race. Yeah. Right. That that for me is, is my goal is a buddy at every big race we do. Like it was, it was, you know, winning Athens was awesome, but being able to give our buddy Noah the trophy after Athens was a thousand times cooler. So, oh, so was, he got the trophy, got to keep the trophy. Yeah, yeah. Gomez gave it to him. Yeah. That's so amazing. That was, Gomez gave it to him to take it home. So like that was, you know, that's something that, you know, I, I have hundreds of trophies, uh, yeah. you know, whether it be a medal, a trophy, whatever it is, like from local races. They sit in know, a box. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sit in a box. It doesn't matter. I, like my yeah. national, I don't even know where my national champion jersey is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a no, savage but, feeling and it's a savage yeah. thing to say, but it, it is true. But yeah. It, it's, you know, cycling is a sport that that stuff becomes secondary and quickly forgot. Yeah. I guarantee you, nobody could tell you who won Athens Twilight nine years ago, like off the yeah. top of their head, you know? And so that trophy for Gomez is a, is a momentary reminder of an accomplishment. And for the team, it's a momentary reminder of accomplishment. But for the buddy, it's a lifetime of remembering that he belongs somewhere. Yeah. And that every time he sees that trophy and talks about the race and, you know, that feeling is worth a billion trophies. <laughs> like, it's, it's, yeah. you, can't, you can't replicate it with a piece of metal. So what is it? what has this been like, man? Like, you're, like, what I think so impressive is, like, because, like, when I was – you know, I'm not saying that I'm so much older than you, like, but when I was 24, I'm 28. And when I was 24 and I was like trying to start teams and like go to businesses and go to sponsors, like you've essentially started a team with a budget and like it runs. And so like that, that wheels running, but you're also managing a mission and it's more than bike racing. And it's more than just like getting kids on bikes. Like these are, these are people's lives. You know what I'm saying? And I, I know that sound, I'm not trying to downplay that at all. Like yeah, it's, yeah. it's just, it's like, there's a lot of mission. Like there's, there's literally a lot of responsibility. Yeah. No, yeah. With, like it's, you know, I'm fortunate that, you know, it might seem like, Oh, Mike runs the whole shebang. And even last year before this year with Craven, he has taken so much responsibility of the cycling stuff off my shoulders. That it's been amazing. Last year I had so much help from Richard freeze And, you know, he's worked for Best Buddies for close to 20 years. And so he really understood the internals of how Best Buddies works. And then we also have so much staff because we're in all 50 states and, you know, 56 countries that I can rely on local staff to, you know, be responsible for the buddies, you know, at the events. Parents are some of the biggest helpers that we had all year long, whether it be like with feeding. We had parents of buddies that, hey, you guys need any help at the race? Yeah, well, we're doing pro nets road race. You want to come hand out water bottles when we're dying on a hill? So, uh, <laughs> so you know, like we've had so much help from the organization itself, and without that, you know, there is no best buddies race, and without the organization. Well, yeah, it's just so cool how it's all one big circle. I guess is like what's cool to me. It's like you guys are helping the organization. The organization is coming into this. I don't even know what 
the background is in cycling. I don't know where they find cycling or why they like cycling, but all of a sudden these people are starting to fall in love with cycling. So then, so now not only are are they coming into the sport with money, like there's so many people that sponsor a cycling team and then never come to a race. And I can yeah. name, we can name like insert restaurant name here. Like, you know what I mean? And then, but like to actively see it all coming full circle is insane to me. It's just, it's, yeah. it's, it's wild. And so I guess to kind of close it out, like what's next for best buddies. And I, I'm going to put you on the spot and I, I know you probably can't answer it fully. And I'm not going to be the guy that goes, when you're going to start a women's team or when you're going to start a junior program or, you know, something like that. But like, what's actually next for you guys? I mean, like, what do you guys want to do? Like, what's the full on mission? You know, the, the team strictly team goal is to be the best team in the U S you know, that right now, that is what we want to accomplish that, you know, what does it take financially uh, staffing all that to become the most, you know, sought after team because of the attention that comes with that yeah, and, the, and how we can push that attention for best buddies and being able to turn all of that into something positive and not just like, Oh, we're winning bike races. And, you know, for me, that's where I want the team to head, you know, before we talk about like, Oh, let's start a women's team and a development program and go to Europe and all these things before all that can happen we have to confidently say that we are getting enough attention to expand. I and, get you. and the, the attention, I don't mean it for the racers. I don't, you know, the cycling news articles about, you know, winning Athens are awesome. They're cool. The videos, the hype is all cool, but using that to raise attention for what we're doing with best buddies is my, it's, it's what my job is inside of best buddies other than being a bike racer. No, that's, that's awesome, man. And, and yeah, like it was, it was so cool to see the last podium. Like you could tell everybody was tired. Everybody wanted to go home, but the last podium was Noah. Is that his name? Yeah. Noah. Noah, Noah got to stand on the top step of the podium, hang out with the boys and uh, yeah, kind of get to do the champagne spirits almost, you yeah. know? And, and that was, that's cool, man. Like that's, that's, no, that, that's that was, that was like, you know, every race that we've had buddies at, we have, that same vibe and energy but like athens is just such a different animal yeah it's 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 even like explaining it to an explaining it to a bike racer like you can't explain athens until you go to athens you got to go to athens and it's like you i can tell you that there's you know six rows of people on every side of the street i can tell you that the bars are packed out all the way down to the jimmy johns you know it's like you can say all these things, but once you go there, it's just so electric. Like you can walk to, into any place. And if they hear that you're a bike racer, like you're a superhero for the day. Yeah. Like it's, un, it's insane. It's uh, which is crazy. Like being in Georgia and uh, <laughs> actually being respected for being in spandex. Yeah. Um, <laughs> on campus, yeah. Yeah. On a, on a very, very packed out D one college campus. Yeah. So it, like they love, they love yeah. Athens twilight. Yeah, like I mean, boys we, love, love that you're a cyclist. You're yeah. Like, it is a weird time. It is a weird time. It's also hard to soak in, but Anyways, man, uh, I don't want to keep you all night. I got one more question for you before we close out. Um, if you could have a cup of coffee with one individual, dead or alive, who would that individual be and why? Um, this always throws everybody for a loop, but it's perfect. Like cyclist or? Anybody, man. That's, that makes it harder. So like, yeah, anybody. Like just somebody that you would want to have coffee with and then how would you take your coffee and then why? Well, she didn't drink coffee, but I would have to say my mom. Your, your mom? I, I miss her. So, uh, yeah. So yeah. If I, if I got the opportunity just to talk to her again, that, that would be why. No, that's, that's something special, man. And I know she'd be proud and stoked on what you're doing, man. I, I would take my coffee iced. I don't like hot coffee <laughs> uh, with oat milk and an extra shot of espresso. I'll Sweet, man. Nah, that's super cool. Yeah. Like I said, man, she'd be stoked on what you're doing. Cause I know a lot of us are stoked on what you're doing and you know, also just, you guys, um, he, I will post a link down in the description below for best buddy. He's also been posting it on his story, but he's personally raising money through a fundraiser on his story. So if you guys want to go donate to that, it's a thousand bucks. I know somebody that listens to this podcast right now could probably donate a thousand dollars. 
Um, and so if you do let me know and I'll send you a care package from top tube coffee and myself, um, that'd be sick. And I know out of bounds podcast is going to donate some money to best buddies for you, my friend. Um, and, and say, yeah, congrats on winning Athens and, and a successful week at, uh, at uh, speed week, man. But uh, other than that, More we'll, to see come. You, we'll see you next time guys. And, uh, yeah, cheers.